One of the most powerful methods that we have for monitoring the well-being of a child is a tool called growth monitoring. Growth monitoring is done all over the world, and when we do it, we're measuring three variables. Firstly, we're measuring the weight of a child, and that's usually recorded at birth, especially if there's a health professional with a scale nearby. Secondly, we monitor the length, or later, when the baby is standing, the height of the child. And finally, we measure the child's head circumference. In many countries, health workers will also use a measurement called mid-upper arm circumference, which is the circumference of the left upper arm halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. Mid-upper arm circumference is a useful tool for fast assessment of nutrition status. But all of these variables together give us a sense of how well that child is growing and sort of a picture of their overall health. So let's start by looking at one of these variables, weight. I'm going to be using a typical South African weight for age growth chart. In this graph, weight in kilograms can be seen here on the y-axis, and age is found along the bottom, along the x-axis. And you'll notice that there are different colored lines on this chart. The green line in the middle is the median, so this means that about half of all South African children will fall above this line and half will fall below it. The orange lines that are labeled minus two and plus two are sort of like the outer limits of where we want to see healthy children fall on this chart. So a child who is 18 months old and weighs 10 kilograms would be plotted here. And I'll plot this child in blue. The most important thing to remember is that a single data point like this doesn't really tell us much about a child's overall health. Ideally, a child's growth is measured or tracked over time, and it's the trend in growth that helps us understand how the child is doing. So imagine we had a different child, and I'll plot this child in orange, and imagine this child came in for his one-year clinic visit, weighing 8 kilograms. And then, perhaps at 14 months, that child was weighed again and had put on 0.5 or one half of a kilogram, so was now weighing 8.5 kilograms. Maybe that child was sick with pneumonia at the age of 16 months, so his weight at that visit was still 8.5 kilograms. Often a drop-off in a child's weight is seen during a short-term or acute illness, Usually, children don't eat as well when they're sick, and their metabolism also speeds up because illness is a stress. So they're burning more calories and taking in fewer. But then, let's say that this child recovers and at 18 months is actually back on his growth curve, a little over nine kilograms. Now, if you compared just these two children at 18 months, and if you looked at just these two data points, you might think that the blue child is healthier or growing better than the orange child at 18 months, right? But what if we were to go back and look at the growth charts of these two children in their first year of life? What if I told you that our blue friend had weighed 3.5 kilograms at birth and had tracked steadily along that curve during his first year of life, weighing 10 kilograms at one year of age. Our orange friend had been born slightly smaller at 2.5 kilograms and had also tracked steadily along his growth curve, weighing eight kilograms at his one year visit. But now let's look at what happens to these two children after one year of age. The blue child who weighed 10 kilograms at age one, didn't gain any weight in the next six months. And at his 20 month visit, this child had gained just one half of a kilogram. In contrast, the orange child continues to grow along his growth trajectory, the one he had been following since birth. So even though the blue child is higher up on the growth curve than the orange child at 18 months, his pattern of growth is much more concerning because our orange friend is tracking nicely along a steady growth curve, 
while the blue child is falling off his ideal curve. And in fact, he's crossing over lines from higher to lower, which can be a real cause for concern, especially after about two years of age, when a healthy child's growth usually begins to follow one curve. Crossing of lines can indicate a serious health problem. The orange child, on the other hand, may just be a constitutionally small child. Maybe his parents are smaller people, or there's some other reason that this is a small but healthy child. Having said that, a steady curve doesn't always mean that a child is healthy. So a child who is tracking steadily, but is on or below the red line, is very likely to be in trouble. Remember that we like to see children fall somewhere between these two orange lines. In the new South African Road to Health book, the focus isn't just on weight for age, but also on height for age. This is the South African height or length for age chart. On this graph, we see length or height in centimeters along the y-axis and age again along the x-axis at the bottom. For height, we also like to see children growing steadily as they get older. But an important distinction between these two growth curves is that a short-term or acute illness, like our orange friend here who had pneumonia, will often result in an acute fall off in weight, but only after long-standing or chronic illness will a child's height drop off. And malnutrition in childhood can be considered a long-standing illness. So when a child doesn't receive enough nutritious foods to eat in the early years of life, that child can become growth stunted, which means that their height doesn't follow the growth curve that represents their full potential for growth. Growth stunting is still a serious problem in South Africa. So the fact that the new Road to Health book recommends routine monitoring of height for age is a step in the right direction towards reducing growth stunting.